Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Shooting the Breeze Sailing Podcast, brought to you by TheSkatePods.com. I'm your host, Captain Jeffrey Wedding, and this is episode number 30. And what you just heard, if you're listening to the podcast, is a band called The Hunts. Uh, I saw them down in Annapolis uh, over my vacation at the Rams Head Live. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, I'm kind of doing a cross uh, cross podcast slash YouTube channel thing right now uh, with this portion of the podcast. Basically, I did my introduction and played this song for uh, uh, called Lifting the Sea from The Hunts. Uh, you can check them out at thehuntsmusic.com. And we were down in Annapolis. I wanted to talk about my sailing vacation. Uh, Nora and I went off on Pegasus for a week uh, cruising the Chesapeake Bay uh, back in the third week in June. And uh, we took off on a Sunday morning. And we were with uh, Jim and Donna Daniels on their Columbia 29 uh, called Good Gifts. And we were heading down the bay. I, you know, I made big plans. I'm going to go. Rock Hall and Chestertown and all this stuff. And basically, we ended up sailing to Annapolis. Uh, but the weather wasn't cooperating. Uh, it was hot and sticky, storms every day. Uh, some of them were severe. So we headed down the bay under uh, motor on Sunday, made it down to uh, Wharton Creek. I uh, wanted to get into Fairley, but Jim and Donna's boat, uh, the reverse wasn't working right, and they drafted more than me, and it was dead low tide when we got down there. So... Uh, spent a lot of time at Wharton Creek over the years, kind of like to change it up a little bit, but it's a good safe anchorage. The only problem with it is uh, cell signal is horrible. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if, I mean, I've had Verizon, I've had T-Mobile, it doesn't matter. You can't get signal. You can barely send a text message if you're lucky. Um, so it kind of sucks in the summer when you're looking for uh, storms and trying to prepare for what's happening. Uh, we got there. It was really hot. I jumped in the water cool off we went up on shore and, and uh, checked out the marina and got some ice cream came back had some wine on jim and donna's boat and uh you know basically i'm watching the the western kind <clears> of <throat> horizon through the cove we were in there to, to watch for storms because there was a big storm up to the north and you know kind of the more i'm watching the west i'm like man it's just i hear all this thunder i don't know what's going on well here like of the tree line to the southeast you know here comes these like tentacles of, of clouds from this storm it's like oh my god so we hopped back on the boat real quick and just beat the storm by about a minute and you know all hell broke loose uh it wasn't terribly windy it was windy enough you know basically i got concerned we were dragging at one point but uh we held firm and rode out that storm had dinner rode out another storm went to bed and you know basically i just didn't sleep for two nights because saturday night the club was hot and sticky and no air moving and I got one fan up in the V-berth, and V-berth hatch that I put in helps uh, when there is an air moving, but it was just raining. I couldn't keep the hatches open. Same thing Monday night. So a storm rolled through at like 5 a.m. I think it was done by 5.45, and I think I maybe slept until 8 o'clock. So I might have gotten two hours of uh, sleep that morning. But, you know, got up, made breakfast, headed out, and had a good sail from Pools Island. And we just basically, I decided to head to the western shore because it was a southeast wind and uh, had a straight shot down through the bridge and right into Annapolis. So we got into Annapolis and uh, we got there. The uh, La Hermione is a tall ship that was docked there for uh, the couple days that we were there. Uh, so we moored up right next to it. Uh, it's basically a faithful reproduction of the ship that brought Lafayette over during the Revolutionary War. And it's on like in a six or eight month journey from France all the way up the U.S. East Coast and then back over to France. Uh, so it was there. Pretty cool to look at. Uh, we didn't get to check it out uh, on deck or anything, but we got there, got checked in, went up on shore, had dinner with Jim and Donna, great dinner of McGarvey's, uh, drinks, the whole nine yards. Uh, probably the best dinner, best food I've had down in Annapolis for a while. Um, I mean, I, I usually go to Middleton's and get uh, appetizers, which are good, but this stuff we were having was pretty, pretty, pretty far and above that. Uh, so we had a good time that night. Next day, uh, we were catching up with uh, Dustin, tour guide instructor Dustin, if you remember um, from episode number 11. Uh, we caught up with Dustin. He was our tour guide on the trip for Kayak Annapolis. And... Uh, if you're looking on the screen here, you can uh, you can see, actually, I've got Kayak Annapolis up over here. Um, 
buddy Pete, Pirate Pete. He's the owner. He's a guy from Lancaster that I know pretty well from hanging out back in the day. Uh, he runs the thing, and Dustin, tour guide instructor Dustin, is one of his main tour guides. Uh, so he was running around with GoPro, and, and we caught up with him on shore there. And he was talking to a bunch of people, and it was kind of funny because he ended up talking to these guys, uh, this dude and a, this dude, and I can't remember their names to save my life, but uh, we were talking to them for like 20 minutes, and then he was like, hey, you know, I want to get some GoPros. So we brought him out on the dinghy, and uh, he got some GoPro of uh, the Hermione, and then we hung out on Pegasus for a while. And you can see our mooring here on screen if you're looking. Uh, this is the Hermione leaving uh, on my YouTube channel here. Uh, this is them leaving on Thursday morning. So you can tell it's a pretty impressive ship. Uh, but anyway, got some GoPro with Dustin, went back on shore, got lunch, and then uh, Pirate Pete actually stopped in and uh, caught us when we were sitting at the cafe. And he said, hey, we'll be over at, uh, at the floating office later if you want to come out and have a beer. So we headed out on the dinghy and had some beers on the uh, floating dock. And when we were over there, we saw these two guys floating around actually taking naps on paddle boards. We're like, that's got to be those two guys, you know. So we kind of yelled at them and said, hey, come on over. So they came over and uh, they were telling us the whole story of uh, there's like 80 volunteers and they do like four-hour rotations when they're on, under sail. And, and every stopover, a third of the crew gets shore leave. So these guys are on shore leave for the Annapolis stopover. Uh, so it was pretty cool. They got the whole story of uh, – how they got into it and how they got volunteered and, and uh, what they do while they're under sail. You know, it's, it's all old school. There are no flashlights, no nothing. Everybody's got their place in the rig and you have to communicate with everybody, uh, whether it's dark or raining or windy or not or whatever. And he was telling us about a trip they made up to Mount Vernon where they had to row the captain ashore like old school style where he's on the bow, you know, with his feet up and the sword and the whole nine yards. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, so definitely check those guys out on the Hermione, Hermione uh, Facebook page. Um, so we got to hang out with them, and then they were like, hey, we're going to see Rock and Roll tonight. <laughs> like, well, where are you going? You know. So here they're going up to see the hunts up at uh, Ram's Head Live. So we got up there uh, later that day. Uh, we decided you know, we're going to go there for dinner and, and check out this band. So uh, as we're coming on shore, we run into Dustin again, and he, he's actually talking to – two of the people from the hunts and basically the hunts are a family band. So it's uh, this sister, I think her name is Jenny. And then uh, one of these other guys, they're all brother and sister. Uh, we're hanging out on the, the end there at Ego Alley. And I'm like, Hey, we're coming up for the show. Do you mind if I recorded for this podcast? And like, no, you know, no problem. Bring it on. So went up to uh, Ram's head, had dinner, ran into Jimmy, Jimmy ha ha. Cause he was part of setting up this show one of the bands he deals with, the Presser Strings, opened up the whole thing. And then there was another band called Panic is Perfect. And definitely check out uh, the Hoot and Andy Down the Hall music podcast. That's my other podcast. Uh, if you're looking on screen, you can see the Facebook page. What I'm working on right now is uh, Emily Grove and Jessica Smucker. <clears throat> they were at Telus 360 before we went on vacation, and I went down and recorded it. And I'm just this week, I'm putting that all together, hopefully going to release it after I release this episode of the Sailing Podcast. Um, but then the next one is going to be uh, The Hunts and Panic is Perfect. So check it out. Uh, so we had a good time there. The next day, Jim and Donna took off and went back over to St. Michael's. Uh, and we stuck around. Uh, Nora's father lives in Annapolis. So we went over there for dinner and hanging out with the family and taking showers and doing laundry and all that fun stuff. And then uh, Thursday morning, uh, that's where this video is from, uh, the Hermione leaving Thursday morning, 7 a.m., high tide. Uh, I had to get out of there. Uh, drafts like 16 feet, so they had to get out at, at the like, ultra high tide. Uh, so a couple hours later, we followed them out, headed up, uh, up the bay. We sailed up to the bridge. Just before the bridge, uh, I had gotten a notice on Facebook that Andy Shell's uh, – Swan 48 East Bjorn was being brought down to Annapolis by his father and a couple friends. So uh, I was on the lookout and I saw him, or at least I thought I saw them. So I motored over and, uh, you know, his dad, Dennis, is like, who are you? And he's like, oh, hey, I remember you. You know, I saw you at the thing. So I said, yeah, Andy said you were coming down and wanted me to take pictures. So I took this picture uh, and Andy used it on his uh, 59 North uh, Facebook page. You can check it out. So it was kind of cool seeing East Bjorn under sail. Um, after that, we headed up the bridge, 
uh, met up with Sugary Brazen Article and Salante, which is uh, three boats from Hanses Point that were on a two-week cruise. They had been down to Tangier and, and beyond. Uh, we were catching up with them, and we ended up in Bodkin Creek. So we went over, anchored up in Bodkin Creek, weathered a storm, um, and it was a pretty nasty storm because I read later there was a boat that, that grounded, like one of those tall, smaller tall ships uh, or schooners grounded for a little while out in uh, the Patapsco River during that storm. Anyway, went to the Bodkin Yacht Club, uh, which is down the way there, and had beers and burgers and hanging out. They were getting ready for a, a weekend of partying. And uh, what all that is. And uh, so we hung out at the Bodkin Yacht Club, and then we hung out on the boats afterwards. And then, of course, it just rained torrentially all night long. Uh, so didn't get a lot of sleep that night either. Got up the next day, hit Ventnor Marina, got some ice, and then uh, headed on up to uh, <clears throat> Ordinary Point, which is where we, our stated destination was. And we had a great sail all the way up through past Pools Island, up past Still Pond, and got right up to uh, the mouth of the Sassafras. And when I went to make the turn on the auto helm, it was just like, was just like oh, man, the battery's been dying all week. I've been, been having trouble with it. And I've been pull starting my motor all week because the, the electric start just didn't have any juice every morning. So I went to pull the motor, pull start the motor, and nothing. No how, no way. Couldn't get that thing to start regardless of what I did, you know, whether I, I thought I flooded it, I drained it out, restarted, let it sit, nothing, wouldn't start. I pulled and pulled, I screwed up my knee, I screwed up my fingers, pulling that thing so hard for half an hour. I, I mean, I tried pulling on it for three hours, but at <clears throat> 2.15 in the afternoon on Friday, I had to decide, all right, I got to sail home. And it was light wind, but it was coming out of the, the northwest, west-northwest, so it was a good straight shot up the uh, Northeast River. But I had to cross the shipping channel in light, shifty winds, and there was rain coming. And I mean, it ended up being okay. It was uh, a pretty good sail. Uh, the wind stayed fairly consistent. I was doing like two and a half, three knots most of the way up the river. Kind of shifted southeast after some, or southwest after the rain came through, so kind of back on my quarter, um, pushed me up the river, ended up getting up there, having to sail onto the mooring and, and all that. So it's kind of sucks when your uh, capacity is diminished like that. gets a little nerve wracking because I, I didn't know if I was going to have to anchor somewhere just to wait for the wind or how long it was going to take and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it was good practice for the Sippy Cup, which is coming up uh, July 31st, August 1st. It's an overnight race that coincides with the Governor's Cup. So that's a, a race I've been wanting to do. It's held uh, by Walden Rigging, which is Dobbs and Suzanne up in Northeast uh, Rigging Company. They're the ones that are sponsoring it and setting it all up. And Mr. Smoker and I, uh, my co-host here, are going to uh, participate this year. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Uh, so it was good practice for that because I haven't had to hand steer <laughs> for long periods of time. Uh, for a long time, you know, I, I hand steer here and there when I'm sailing, but usually I'm running the uh, the auto helm. So it was good practice for that. Uh, that's coming up. Got back to the, the club, like I said, I had to sail onto the mooring, and you know, one of the guys on 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 the porch watching. You know, when I got back up on shore, he's like, "Hey, man, you were putting on a clinic sailing through that mooring field, catching that mooring." I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> I'd rather not, but it's a good thing to know that you're able to do that. Uh, so anyway, I kind of diagnosed the battery issue. Um, I hope I have it figured out. If not, I'm going to have to buy a new battery. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the next morning, I figured I'd just try the motor, see what happens, and God damn it, first pull, thing fired right up. So, yeah, very frustrating. So I will have uh, starting fluid from now on, and definitely, you know, try and keep tabs on uh, keeping the battery terminals clean and all the make sure there's no shorts and all that kind of stuff so anyway uh for those of you watching on youtube here i'm going to make this part one and i'm going to stop it and then i'm going to tell you about some of the racing that i've been up to lately uh so just check out uh part two which you'll be able to find right here on my youtube channel and for those of you on the podcast hang on a second while i change my recorder